I'm Sam Popkin. I'm a professor of political science at UC San Diego, and I'm the author of The Candidate, What It Takes to Win and Hold the White House. It's based partly on my experience in five Democratic presidential campaigns and a lot on research I did in archives and interviewing Republicans about the other campaigns since World War II. Incumbents, challengers, and successors, the person trying to hold the White House for the ruling party, are entirely different animals. And right now we're watching a classic battle between an incumbent and a challenger. When you're the challenger, no matter who you are, you're, do, you're asking people to do a regime change. And when there is a president in power, no matter who it is, you're telling people he's more of the same. That was really Carville's most brilliant line on the board in Little Rock. Everybody remembers the line, the economy, stupid. That was the middle line. The top line was change versus more of the same. And the incumbent is more of the same. Whatever they promise, they have to show how it's built on what they've done. And that you're the outsider. You have to explain why the change you promise is for real, is realistic, is credible. <laughs> Former Governor Romney, as a challenger, has surprised me time and time again by being less good than I expected. I'm afraid I fell for the mistake that, you are, that I warn against over and over in the book, which is looking at the resume. I expected a far more competent candidate who planned more carefully in advance. It was obvious that Governor Romney's exceptional wealth and business success is a two-edged sword. You don't need a poll of Governor Romney to know that if you're wealthy, people think you're very competent, people think you're very smart, and people think you're very hardworking. But they also suspect that you're greedy, and they also suspect that you're not quite as honest as they have to be, and that you probably don't pay enough taxes. Now, all of that can be handled, but you have to do something about it to overcome it. People do a lot of judging of the competence of a candidate by how they run the campaign. Fairly or unfairly, depending on whose side you're on, it's just a fact. They look at the campaign and they think about what the person's doing. It looks to me like Governor Romney is trying to make too many decisions himself as a CEO and hasn't, doesn't have somebody with him with national competence, who knows him well and can keep his family and his Massachusetts team on the same page. Stuart Stevens is, an, is a superb media person and did brilliant work with Governor Bush in the 2000 debate prep. But when I read that Stuart Stevens had thrown out two uh, acceptance speeches this year and had helped rewrite the final speech, and was working on doing the media, and was the chief strategist, th those are three jobs no one person can do in any campaign. Now, there was just a remark that surfaced on YouTube of Governor Romney saying the 47% are dependent on the government. They're never going to vote for me. This is a line. I have heard many times from red state governors and congressmen in very conservative, safe districts. When you hear that, you know that anybody who wants the national 50% is going to have a problem. His donors believe the 47% story. He has to have those donors, and he has to have some of those 47% vote for him. He has to find a way of agreeing with people that lets a lot of them off the hook. He could have said, well, we have to remember, many of those people 
are, are on tuition loans who will become our voters. Or a lot of those people are in the armed services. Or some of those people are retired people that we can't let die. There, there are many ways to talk about it that distance yourself a little and give you some maneuvering space. I thought the Ryan pick was two things. One, very smart, and two, pure defense. People at the time said, bold, bold, bold. The right-wing columnist said, yes, 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 red meat, red meat. Well, they are people with constituencies that will never get you to the middle of the road. Imagine two scenarios. Congressman Ryan on the ticket, Congressman Ryan, leader of the challenging half of the congressional party. As Congressman Ryan, Congressman Ryan wants to defend his brand name as the leader of the new guard against the old guard, and his goal is Speaker of the House or President later. As potential Vice President, now Congressman Ryan is more willing to redefine what the Ryan budget means or what the you know, Ryan budget 2.0 when we reboot would be. But that required planning I haven't seen. I'm surprised that you pick Congressman Ryan and then muddle along, well, what does it mean? If you know you're gonna pick Congressman Ryan, why haven't you figured out what's behind the hidden asterisks? Why haven't you explained better your 700 billion cuts versus the Obama cuts? Do you think nobody will ever point out they're exactly the same at the other convention? Look, if another million people lose their jobs next month, it could work out. If something huge collapses, it could work out. But every day I'm more willing to place a slightly larger bet on the president. You know, it, there's never a certainty early on when you have a mediocre economy and a, and a party that's gaining strength. But when the party is gaining strength, you have to know the difference between the maximal break down every door of the new bulls who have come to Washington and what's going to work in Ohio, Florida, and elsewhere. You've got to be far more prepared.